Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Popcorn Finance, the show where we discuss finance in about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. Over the past three weeks, we've been doing a little bit of a reintroduction to the world of savings. And that's because interest rates are really high right now, which is, makes it a great time to be a saver. And, you know, we've covered high yield savings accounts, CDs, uh, money market accounts. And today we're finally getting to the point where we're going to wrap up this series and to close things out. I wanted to take a look at how the world of savings has just changed over the past few decades. And to help me with this conversation, I'm joined by John Blizzard. He is the president and CEO of Seattle Bank and founder of our partner this month, CD Valet. So, John, appreciate you coming on the show with me. You bet, Chris. Thanks for having me. In preparation for all the episodes I've done in the series so far, I, you know, I would do, I would read up, I would do, try to do as much research as I could to try to understand some of the origins of these these products. And you know, it was really interesting seeing these old images of like the first CD products here in the U.S. where they're giving actual certificates <laughs> to people when they write their name and sign it. Uh, even like you know, jumping forward to like the '80s, you're seeing the physical passbooks. It almost looked like a like a passport where you would go in yeah. there and they would throw it into a little machine and it would punch in your uh, your new balances and interest updates. And so for you, I'm curious, like, what have you seen in the world of savings accounts change over the years that you've worked in the industry? Yeah, I think probably one of the biggest things is that you've seen checking accounts that now pay interest, right? Mm. There used to be a very big divide between a transaction account, a checking account, and a savings account. And now those two things have kind of melded together. And so there's many, many um, financial institutions that offer checking accounts that pay interest. And that is a that is probably the the biggest fundamental change in in um, just kind of your basic savings products. Um, the other thing is the uh, the amount that people have put into different savings products has changed dramatically. So if you go back to like the '80s, over 50 percent of bank deposits were in CDs. Customers' deposits were CDs. That dropped probably sub 10 percent during COVID and all that stimulus that got put into banks. And now that's back up to 15%. So 15% of all the $20 trillion in deposits in the banking system are CDs. And so, um, you know, you could expect that to number to go even higher as consumers, um, you know, we're in an era that finally pays good rates. Yeah. It's literally been 15 years been uh, or more pre, you know, pre iPhone was the last time we had rates this high. We expect uh, that they'll just continue to be more shifting in balances. The banks have seen a lot of shifting out of checking accounts, for example, into CDs um, and so forth. And it's great. That the biggest thing is it's great to see savers make some money. They've gone 15 hard years of very low interest rates. And sure, that was great for borrowers. Sure, it was great for folks that are refinancing their mortgages. Uh, but the savers really were on the losing end of that. Uh, Chris, for a really, really long time. That's not normal. The rates we have now are more normal. The last 15 years was not normal. That was one of the reasons why I even thought about doing this series was because, you know, I'm just old enough to where I remember seeing like pretty decent interest rates. Cause I was going into college in uh, 2005. And so, you know, for me, I had a couple years as an adult of like, oh, you know, it's actually earning some interest here. <laughs> right. And then immediately just went to zero and it just stayed there for, for pretty much all this time. And uh, there's so many people who have become adults in the past, you know, 15 plus years who don't even know what a world is like with like actually reasonable interest rates. I was curious because as, as someone who has worked at a high level in the banking industry, how do you view interest rates from that side of the business? Because, you know, for most of us, we, you know, we know from the consumer side what we sure. see and how we think about interest rates changing. But I'm really curious for you, how, how, how do you, like, I guess, interact and think about this world? Yeah, so when I came to Seattle Bank 10 years ago, we decided at that time we were going to build a bank that was, uh, really served customers for the future. And what that meant is embracing technology. What it also meant is paying people a fair and really competitive rate on their deposits. And we could do that because we got rid of our branches. Mm -hmm. And so um, we still have a local, uh, local branch, local location, but we really could pass on that savings um, and, and the you know higher rates to our um, customers on the deposit side. So what that forced us to do is to make a little different decisions on the loan side. And so that was really important because that um, 
that means we didn't chase really low loan rates and loans, especially during COVID that has now gotten a lot of banks in deep, you know, uh, pretty bad trouble because um, they, they're finding it difficult to pay their customers a decent deposit rate because they're stuck with all these low rate loans, right? Mm, yeah. Well, for us, we love it. The higher rates, the better. Um, we built our company for this environment. And um, actually, that's been an enabler to us uh, go create CD Valet as well, which I know we'll talk about in a minute. Um, because we don't mind telling everybody, everyone's rates, all the banks and credit unions, all of our competitors, because we're going to be competitive day in, day out. And we've got a cost structure and a business model that supports that. Most banks are not liking the current environment because they're stuck with a lot of low rate loans. They would much prefer rates to go down um, from here. So, When you go out and try to find interest rates on like a, a CD, for example, you get a million websites all giving you like the same, like five banks. It feels like over and over again. It's just the way the industry works, right? There's, you know, a lot of fees and commissions that go on behind the scenes that allow, you know, that incentivize certain companies to talk about certain banks because it's just the way the it works. And so when I found that CD Valet, it's just really just an open database, really like an open network of all of the rates that are out there. And it's, I've never actually gone to a website and searched for rates and seen that many options come up. <laughs> there's uh, a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot, which is good. Options are good because, I mean, it ranges from big banks to regional credit unions. Uh, and it does a great job of like, sorting it all out for you. And so where did this idea come from? Like, why, did, especially coming from a bank, a specific bank, and then deciding, yeah. you know what? Let's just, let's just put all the rates out there, even if it's, you know, competitive and maybe beats our rate that we have. Yeah, no, great question. And, um, you know, we kind of stumbled into this business, frankly. So we had uh, back in 2018, uh, we had uh, some some strong growth at the time and we're looking to raise deposits and uh, we're offering really attractive CD rates back then. But we noticed online they weren't getting picked up by the so-called marketplaces. Mm. So the bank rates and others didn't show our rates. And then we started looking into it and we we're like, wait, wait a minute, they're not showing other banks we know have good rates on there either. And then we realized they're really lead gen sites, lead generation sites for the internet banks. And so we dug into that and realized, wow, really, A, the consumer's not seeing all the options by any stretch. And two, the losers here also, the community banks and credit unions who were not getting visibility. All of a sudden, they're competing online. If you think about 15, 20 years ago, community banks and credit unions would compete in the newspaper against the big banks. So a big yeah. bank would have a bigger ad, but at least the bank, a small community bank or credit would have an ad next to it. It'd be a smaller ad, but at least you'd be in there side by side, right? <laughs> and you could have your better offering or whatever in there. But online, that's not how it works. It is a very sophisticated, very competitive area. And there are some super sophisticated players that have been at it a really long time and know how to maximize that channel to get business and leads. So anytime you type mm -hmm. something in um, or see links and articles, et cetera, you know, it's just a totally different um, competitive landscape. And so we realized that and realized, wow, community banks, credit unions, even regional banks, uh, they have a really uphill battle here to try to compete and, and at least um, allow consumers, even in their own geographies, to know that they're there and they have a great offering. So yeah. um, so we did. We looked into uh, participating on some of these platforms, see if we could pay to be on there. Back in 2018, it was astronomical amounts of money for a community bank to be on there. And you had to be national to even play. At the time, we only offered local you know, CDs in our state. And so, um, frankly, we decided then we were going to do something about it and uh, create our own uh, version of something that was a marketplace for consumers. Um, and capture the whole market. It made no sense to me, Chris, that there was no place online for a very simple product like CDs that you couldn't go shop and find out all your options. Now you yeah. may be in, uh, you know, you may be in Texas and want to just look at local Texas banks or credit unions or whatever, and you should be able to just do that easily. Or you want to look online across the nation. Um, great, you can do that. You, but there was nowhere really to do that. And so we've created that. We have the most robust set, uh, site in the country. We track over twenty-five thousand CD rates a week. Um, we track all the financial institutions, um, and if they're over a certain size, they're on our site every day, and we monitor all the really, really small ones, and if they have good rates, we put them on our site as well. Um, but it is a very comprehensive site, and all that information is there for the consumer. The other thing we wanted to do, Chris, is make it actionable. So mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that the financial institution that has that great rate 
um, that the consumer could easily do business with them. So we've added that onto our site um, that if the financial institution wants, we can work with them and they, the consumer can open a CD or start that journey right on our site. And so that's been an exciting thing. We want to reduce the friction, make it easy for them to come together and uh, help consumers make a lot more money. So we rolled out a uh, test run during COVID with our own customers uh, and had tremendous feedback. And so then we built the, our official CD Valley site and really rolled out nationally about April of last year. And Chris, we've had over a million people to our site honestly without really trying um and uh we expect a significant increase in that number going forward and we know based on the feedback uh, we're delivering significant value to consumers and uh, we're going to keep evolving the site and and uh helping them you know put more money in their pocket that's the goal yeah exactly that's the whole point of saving right is to actually have your money grow and do something for you <laughs> then rather that's just right. sit there and, and lose value and uh john i really appreciate the time thanks so much for for coming on here giving us a little bit of insight into how the banking industry has changed over the years. Before we get out of here, if people want to uh, learn more about what's going on at CD Valet, connect with uh, with you and what you have going on, uh, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to you? Where should they go visit? Yeah, go visit us at cdvalet.com and you can uh, contact us through there and we'd love to hear from you and check it out. We love, uh, you know, if, hey, if, if folks have ideas, consumers on the site, financial institutions on the site, we'd love to hear the ideas. If they think we're missing something, or there's an area to improve. Um, that just makes our day to hear the feedback. If you love something you see, that's great too. We'd love to hear that. <laughs> uh, and so, um, yeah, welcome all feedback. It'd be great. We're really early in this, Chris. We think we've got a, a big opportunity to help consumers in a huge way over the next decade here oh yeah for sure i i, I agree it's, it's it's a tool that was needed and maybe hey, in the future maybe expand out to other uh, areas of the uh, the savings world outside of the cds you never know <laughs> <laughs> hey well john thank you so much really appreciate the time and it was getting to uh, talk with you on the show great nice talking to you chris <laughs>